Hey guys, this is going to be a tutorial video of the previous video on my various cues and different tempos and cross-fading the transitions instead of jumping between them on the beat. So what I have here is the project we looked at before with the field. So basically the field music and you can go to a shop. It'll trigger shop music and go into a battle from the field. And the thing about this is they'll crossfade to each other instead of just jumping. So I actually haven't set up a tempo. I mean, I did for the first one here to make sure it worked. But the tempo isn't really necessary. Like, I, I, I can actually delete this, and it'll still work fine. So let's see. Let me just show you really quick jumping to shop music from the field and jumping back. So as you noticed, it, they kind of crossfade instead of just jumping one from one to another. I have an example of it just jumping, and let me show you what that sounds like. That's pretty abrupt and can ruin immersion. Let me show you again the crossfading. This can work really well in a game, especially when you're going from one scene to another and it happens pretty fast. Maybe you can have the crossfade last longer or maybe the crossfade into a loading screen, but but this works a lot better cuz then, you know, when you go into a shop, let's say like in Zelda, it does take like maybe half a second it fades to black to go into the shop. So this crossfade just helps create that immersion on screen. And now let's go into the shop. Just kidding, let's go back to the field. That was the wrong shop, let's say. Now let's say we want to go to a different shop. And now let's go back. And just for fun, let's trigger a battle really quick. And then from that battle, all we can do is win or lose. Let's just win. And then back to the field. This won't crossfade because we don't really need this to crossfade. So, I mean, it kind of sounds a little bit abrupt, but when you're looking at the screen and you push a button that says continue, the, the screen might have to load or it might flicker real quick or just cut right to it away from that screen. So it'll kind of match what's going on in the game. But anyways, it's a lot better than just going from one and jumping straight to another, especially when you're doing transitional things on the field, going to a store or going to a battle. So let's talk about how we did that. We can't just use these transition regions. We have to use these events. We have to use event sounds within the project. If you can see here, let me zoom in, there actually isn't a waveform here because this is an event, not an actual waveform. So you can double click here and see that's where the waveform is. It's coming from this one, this event music. Here. So let's make a new event. Uh, let's just call this tutorial. And like before I said in my previous videos, which I suggest you watch if you kind of 
need to see how to set up a basic project and some of the basic techniques because this is a little bit more advanced. So I suggest you watch those first and they will be in the description. But first let's make a new tutorial event here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a event sound. And I have no idea how long this event sound is. There's no audio. We can double click. There's no audio that belongs to it. So let's go find a music track. And like I said in my previous videos before, I can't use the audio bin, which I suggest you use if you're going to use stuff used already. The screen capture won't let me drag them in, so I'm just going to drag in brand new stuff. So let's see if I can find my loop for the field. And I think it was called Lively Meadow. There it is. We're going to drag that in here. This is the timeline. There's no event yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make an event and make it just as long as this one. So how we're doing that? Oh, maybe we can make a new audio track. So we're going to make it match the length of this track here. This might be where you could put the uh, tempo marker so it can be exact, but this should be fine. So now I'm going to delete that because we don't really need it. So now I'm going to double click in here and we're actually going to put that same audio inside the event. And how I got inside the event is I double clicked it. And maybe you don't want to call it event sound. Let's, let's actually call this the field music. So why are we adding these events? So we can crossfade between them. Instead of jumping like this, like we had here earlier. It's really abrupt. They don't crossfade between each other. And this helps a lot when music, um, when there are various music cues that are in different tempos. And when it comes to field, let's say field music and shop music and battle music, those could be all different tempos. Um, you could have them all in the same tempo, but having this sort of variety makes it a little bit more interesting. And it all depends on what your game um, needs musically, too. So let's go find shop music. Uh, let's use, do we want to use that one? I think we do. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I think this one is it right here. This should be it. <laughs> All right, so again, we're going to make this. We're going to make a new event that is just as long as this one. I'm actually going to put this on top. Let's get this one about right. OK. And we're going to make a loop region here. New loop region. New loop region. These are going to transition between each other. And we can get rid of that. And we want to put that inside here. Remember, again, I have to stress this because I don't want you guys having 50 copies of this because I'm dragging this again from an, the original source, but it's making a copy every time I drag it in. And just for tutorial purposes, I have to do it this way because the screen capture won't let me use the audio bin. So you can see here, it's already created all these copies. So you want to use the audio bin if you want to reuse assets. Anyways, now we have this. They're not crossfading though. We haven't even had any transition markers, so let's go ahead and add markers. Let's add the first marker. This is field. And let's add the transition marker. Oh, we can't do that yet because we need to add the field. Oh, I'm sorry, the shop. You don't have to get it too exact, but you can zoom in all the way to get really close to see and make sure you're starting right at the beginning. Okay, and this will be our shop. All right, now going back to some of the older stuff we've been doing, we need to make a transition region. So let's make a transition region to the shop. There's no crossfading going on yet. Sorry, let me zoom all the way out. That'd be better. All right. And if we play this, it's just going to jump to the shop. There's no logic yet. So let's add that parameter. Let's say transition shop. And let's make this. Yep, there we go. When this knob is turned, 
not when you just I guess when you just turn the knob when it's all the way at zero it's going to go back to the field so anything more than zero will go to the shop and let's make this one go back to the field and it's okay that these are overlapping the loop regions it's not going to go past it anyway so these don't have to be exact just make sure the loop regions are set correctly and we need to add logic to that and going back to the field there we go it says to field and again we're not doing this in time they're just gonna crossfade so we can have this set to off which means it's gonna go to it right away but they're gonna crossfade so we don't have any crossfades but let's see if this works and now going to the feet uh, the shop Well, that's a mess, isn't it? We need to add the crossfades now because it's just going to go from one event to another and it's going to keep playing them. It's not actually going to stop. It's just going to go from one to another and it's not going to stop the other track until it's over. And this track is actually pretty long for a loop. So now what we want to do for the crossfade is click on the audio track you want to. So this is there's only one audio track, so let's just... Game music. All right. So what you want to do with the volume fader is you want to add modulation. Right click and add modulation. And make sure this is inside the timeline and not inside your event. Again, to get to the event, you right double click. Sorry, you double click, left click the event here. So we're going to add modulation AHDSR. Now, if you look at this, this is the modulation for the volume. So this, this screen here is showing this sort of thing here that looks like automation. And what you're looking at is the attack and the release and the hold and the decay. And you can see the straight curve here. This is, and it says attack one second. It's going to take one full second to get all the way to this specified value. So it's from um, negative infinite 0 dB. So not 0 dB, sorry. Um, pretty much nothing all the way up to 0 dB where it's the full volume of the track and then when this fades out it's gonna take one second to fully fade out so let's see if this works by just starting it oh sorry let's start here okay great and now we need to do this to this um, the, this other event here I kind of moved it. All right. Let's double click on it. All right. We're going to add modulation to that. Actually, what I did was add modulation to the game music, not the event. Sorry. So let's go back and take this out. And let's add it again. That's my bad. So you got to click on the event. Click on the event, make sure it's highlighted, and then you're going to add that modulation. So the full um, music track, the music channel here, doesn't have any of that, but this event does. So the event has one, and this other event has one. And let's see if this works again. Make sure I got it right. Great. Now let's see if this event this uh, shop event has it too. Great, and now let's see if they crossfade between each other. Oh, awesome, they do crossfade between each other, but there's a dip in the volume. I mean, you can tweak that to your liking, so let's see if we can do this. Let's make the release last a little bit longer, and let's curve it out like this. This means it's going to take a little bit longer for it to fully go out. So let's go back here and see how this worked. Well, that was a little bit better, but let me show you if you make this really long, what happens. It took a little bit for it to fully fade out, and that's not really 
the best. So you have to play with this to see what works well with each different um, event that you want to crossfade, each music event you want to crossfade. Same thing with this one. We're going to fade this out a little bit longer, just a little bit, maybe three seconds longer. So let's try this again. And let's go back to the shop. That worked really well. And let's go back to the field. And so there you have it. It kind of cross-faded. And I tweaked it a little bit so it faded out a little bit more so there isn't a complete dip in the volume. And I think that's it for the cross-fading technique. This is pretty much exactly the same as this, except it takes a little bit more work to do the cross-fading. And I do have one more example. Let's go back to Artemis, a project we looked at the first time on my very first FMOD video. And I did have an example of using crossfades here. So I remember this video, we had layers. Layering between intensities. But then here, I also programmed the uh, crossfades here. So I have the event sounds, and they can go from one to another, and they'll crossfade between each other. And like I was saying before, and when I was talking about this project, your source material has to be solid, has to work well, you know, interactively, and that, that just comes from practice, making sure you're thinking in a video game music mindset when you're producing these tracks. And it's more than just getting the mood right. That's pretty much the first thing is getting the mood right. But getting the tracks to work functionally in the game engine is really, really important too. So let's just see how these crossfading transitions work in this project. I'm going to transition to this middle one. Let's transition back, cross-fading out. So let's cross-fade to the last one here, and then maybe back to the first one. This one took a while to cross-fade out. I think that was on purpose. And now let's look at the modulation I set up. So you can see the kind of settings I have here, I kind of curved them out a lot. Let's see, this one that I said cross-faded out a while, let's see why. Yeah, this this one here takes five seconds for it to fully cross-fade out. And this one cross-fades in uh, less than a second. So that's kind of why it does that. And I think that was on purpose because I wanted this to tamper out a little bit more. So this one's going to cross-fade into the first one. And like I said, the, my, source, my source material here is a sort of ambient beat music. Because of the ambience and the reverb, it will be a lot more immersive than just jumping because of the, the ambience that I have. Now, when you have the jumping transitions, it's a little bit abrupt, but it still kind of works because of the beat. But I think working with the cross-fading transitions works a lot better. But let me show you a little bit of the jump. It's going to jump right on the beat. And it's a little bit abrupt, it's less immersive, and that's why I kind of like the cross-fitting layers for this, for this particular project. Every project is different, every game is different. They all have different needs for music and audio. But for this cross-fitting transitions, um, that should be it for this tutorial. There will definitely be more FMOD projects coming soon, more interactive stuff I can show you. There's way more techniques to show off what FMOD can do. And if you haven't already, please check out the other videos I had. And I, some of you who might have been watching this for the first time probably might make more sense if you check out the older videos, some of the more simple techniques and tutorials. But there will definitely, like I said, be more stuff coming up soon. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.